Hey, I'm Ben from Modern Graham, and today we are going to do evaluation of Enterprise Products Partners LP. So be sure to stick around to see what I think of this company. Now, this one has the ticker of EPD. The current price is $24.84. It is an energy company in oil and gas. And these are the items from the balance sheet that I find most important. We have the total current assets, the total current liabilities, the long-term debt, the total assets, the intangible assets, the total liabilities, and the outstanding shares. Now over here on this graph, you can see the earnings per share over the last uh, couple decades, actually. And in blue, you can see earnings per share went up, came back down for a recession there, and then have been pretty much on a tear for a very long time. And dividends per share in red, you can see, have also been very steadily growing. In fact, I think that might be earnings growth every year, but let's double check. So earnings in detail, you can see over the last couple of decades, the earnings have steadily risen. Earnings per share modern gram EPS MG is a weighted average of the last five years of earnings, putting the most weight on the current years. So look at these five here, take the most weight there and the least weight there, and you end up with 213. So that can smooth out the uh, cycle in the business cycle. We're like the ups and downs of the business cycle to give you a better idea of how the company has done long term. And you can see that it has really been on a good rise there. Dividends, like I said, we have had over, tw uh, well, however long this is, how many years is this? 23 years of dividend growth on this chart and we might have more than that we'll find out in a little bit but the dividend growth has been steady and the dividend yield is very high the dividend payout ratio is rather high but that just means that the company is paying out a lot of its earnings it's not trying to grow so that dividend growth is not very high each year but it is steady and for the most part, most years, it has surpassed inflation. This year, we'll see what happens. As everybody knows, inflation is pretty high right now. And so that might not keep up with inflation this year. But the dividends have grown every year, and that's good. Now, stage one of the modern grand valuation is to figure out if the company is suitable for the defensive investor or the enterprising investor. The defensive investor, remember, is somebody who is not willing to do extensive research into the individual company. So they have a rather stringent set of tests that companies must pass in order to be suitable for investment. This one, the first test is market cap has to be over $2 billion. It has market cap over $54 billion, so it easily passes that. Current ratio is supposed to be over 2. It fails in that regard. The current ratio here is only 0 0.87. Positive earnings per share for 10 straight years. It has achieved that. And dividend payments for 10 straight years. It has achieved that as well. Earning or increase of one third in earnings per share in the past 10 years using three year averages at the beginning and end. And it does just barely pass that with 39% growth between those figures. PEMG, the ratio, the price to earnings ratio using that weighted average, PEMG, it has to be below 20. Here it is 11.65, so it passes and price to book ratio has to be below 2.5 and it passes that. So if you've been keeping count, this one has a score of six out of the seven and that makes it suitable for defensive investors. Enterprising investor, we have other tests too. The enterprising investor is willing to do additional research into the company, so their tests are not as stringent and this one because it is suitable for the defensive investor, it already it, we already know going into this that it will be suitable for the enterprising investor. But let's take a look at the test anyway. The current ratio is supposed to be over 1.5. As we said earlier, the current ratio for here is only 0 0.87. So it fails in that regard. But then debt to net current assets has to be under 1.1. It is. Uh, that figure might not quite be right. Yeah, 
Yeah, this, uh, I need to adjust that. If this is actually a fail here, a negative debt to net current asset is not good. So that one is a fail. But uh, then positive earnings per share for five years, it passes that. Currently pays a dividend, passes that. Earnings per share greater than five years ago, that is true. So it passes that. Now, but if that's a fail, then it gets three out of five. So if it wasn't suitable for the defensive investor, it wouldn't be suitable for the enterprising investor. Stage two is a determination of intrinsic value. We look to the modern Graham value formula, which is taken from Benjamin Graham's The Intelligent Investor. The only thing I've done different is the earnings figure is my weighted average here. So value equals earnings per share times 8.5 plus two times the growth rate. So we have two variables we need to calculate. First, earnings per share modern gram, like I said, is a weighted average and we take the uh, estimate for the current, the next fiscal year, 2.13. We plug that down here into the calculating modern gram value spot here. And then the Earnings growth, we take a look at the current earnings per share and that from five years ago and we calculate the growth at 43.11%. Divide that by five, you get 8.62 and put in a safety margin there. This is a key spot to have a safety margin because growth is a key variable in this formula. You don't want to get that wrong. So if you overestimate growth, you will have a big impact on your intrinsic value estimate. But putting those two numbers in, we get a value of 4568. And as you can see from the chart here, the modern gram value is much higher than the price. And down here, we have modern gram opinion that it is undervalued. A couple other things to note, modern gram value based on 3% growth. If you assume only 3% growth and use the earnings figure there, you get a value of $30.90. And 0% growth, if the company were not to grow at all for the rest of the time, this is the value it would be, 1812. So the market implied growth rate is 1.58%. That means that the market is estimating that this company will grow by 1.58% throughout the rest of time. So if you think that it will grow more than that, then the company would be undervalued. If you think it will grow less than that, then the company would be overvalued. That's another way of thinking about valuation here is looking at that implied growth rate. Coming down here, we have the modern gram grade. It gets two points for the, uh, I don't know what happened here. It's another issue with my formula, but anyway, the uh, it gets two points for being suitable for the defensive investor, one point for being undervalued, one point for trading below its gram number, one point for long term dividend growth, half a point for uh, yield above two percent, and half a point for being below its industry average PEMG for a total score of six points, which is an A plus grade. It is, yeah, a very good grade. So that is good to know. Stage three, further research. Looking at the net current asset value formula, that is a way of having a liquidation value. A company could take all of its current assets, pay off its total liabilities and divide out by the uh, remaining shares. And that would be the net current asset value. This one is a negative, so it doesn't really apply here, but good to know about that formula. Graham number formula. This is another thing that a lot of people like to look at when they are valuing a company. It is a derived figure from a lot of the defensive investor requirements from Benjamin Graham. And that comes to 2569 for this company, which is right around the price of 2484. Price to earnings uh, formula results in 11.65. And then, of course, the current ratio we've talked about, 0.87. Price to book value is, or price to book ratio is 2.09. Dividend yield is currently just over 7.5%, and it has 24 years of dividend growth logged in my model. Okay, now stage four in the valuation is to look at the chart. If you've gotten this point and you've decided that it is suitable for your investor type, 
it is undervalued and you've done further research to determine that it fits within your own portfolio, now is the time to look at the market to see if you can get it timed right because we want to try to maximize the amount of profit that we're able to make. We know that it's undervalued, but that does not mean that it's a good time to buy it. You have to take that additional step to try to figure out when the right time to get in is. And that can maximize your short-term profit. But anyway, looking at this, you can see since June, it has been on a downward trend and it has right now kind of fallen below that trend line a little bit farther but it also has this support level or resistance level right now it's below that so it's coming up and hitting that where it was a, a level here that it bounced off of and it is kind of in the range where it had trouble breaking through on the upward side it bounced all around it here and back there and back there so this is a pretty solid resistance level if it gets back above that it will turn into a support level and you might see it kind of bounce around up here potentially breaking above that trend line and then maybe we'll see something different there but down here is the major support level you can see it bounced around there it bounced around there here and going back a ways there too so if it fails to make it through here it might come back down and hit that level again before coming back up and those will be things to look at for down here you have the momentum indicator rsi and then i have moving averages of that as well so you can see some of that like here we have the i believe the red line is the uh shorter of the two moving averages so it has moved above it just had a crossover of that momentum recently so we might be seeing it come back up but you can tell way down here it was oversold so it came back up and here it was oversold and came back up so those are things to keep in mind and keep an eye on for when it might be time to get in on this one but that's it from me for this now this company was one of my top 10 high yield dividend stops uh list the video that has the other ones is on the screen now be sure you click on that and watch that and until next time, take care.